Well, greeting fellow RVers. It's Michael here at California Travel Videos, and uh, today we do that other side of RV stuff, yes. Um, in the summer, we took a trip uh, going up the Pacific North towards Eureka, and um, along the way we saw some elk and thought, hey, let's pull over and get some good pictures and videos, which we did. And the grass was there, just a little bumpy or so I thought, but man, when you get this 25-foot um, RV, Class C, and it's kind of bouncing around, um, a little bumps, and I thought, well, no big deal. Sometime later, I noticed that, hmm, the microwave oven, it no seemed to be working, so um, what's up with that? And I thought, well... Maybe it's a fuse or something. So, you know, I did the old typical thing is um, went up in the circuit breaker box and um, yeah, make sure they're all good and, you know, check the fuses and things. But, um, you know, I think that when you see that it is actually have power to it, I don't think it has a separate circuit for the um, high voltage. Um, supply that is the magnetron there so you know just kind of give it a go give it a test and so um, let it run for a moment and just double check make sure it isn't working again before I go to plan B which we'll talk about in a minute but um, this is a, a dual function um, it's an Apollo is the one that comes in this Fleetwood um, icon and so it has both a microwave cycle as well as a convection oven. And since the convection oven still works, this is the halftime oven. And um, no, they don't really make them all that much anymore, but um, yeah, you can get parts. And um, they've tried to rebrand it after they went manufactured discontinued by another company. And uh, I thought, well, would I replace it with the same one? Will I try repairing it? And I thought, well, hmm, decisions. So at any rate, it's been going a while there. And let's take a look. Nope, completely cold. So yeah, it's not going anywhere. So the options, option number one would be to um, take it apart. So I found a good YouTube video that talks about how to do the um, troubleshooting and repair. And for anyone with any kind of electrical background, um, or at least common sense, quote unquote common sense, should be able to almost do it. Um, I did want to say though, regarding safety first, yeah, once you take the, um, the cover off of the microwave, you have to make sure that capacitor is discharged. Now, if it's been sitting there like months in my case, it's going to be discharged. But if you powered it up and, um, you know, the power went to the high voltage supply, but the magnetron was bad, and you think, well, it doesn't seem to be working, so I'll just touch that capacitor. You don't want 2,000 volts going through your body. That is not a good thing. Okay, but option two, option two would be to get another microwave oven. And you know, when you figure there, if you look on some of the places where you get good reviews, I did for Amazon, and you can find a good replacement one for this one. I think it's about 21 inches across and around 12 high. And just to get a replacement for $180, you know, there's one on Amazon that is um, Amazon recommended, which is where they have about, you know, 500 or more reviews. Everybody gets four star reviews or more. Sounds good to me. So just to make sure it fits in there. So our job is gonna be replacing the microwave oven, which means having your drill and um, how many screws do you think are in this? A dozen, 120, 1200. So yeah, we're gonna get them um, a little cup to put all these in and um, wish me luck as I start the disassembly and we're going to see if we can put a new microwave replacement where this little rascal seems to be um, seeing better days. Okay, wish me luck. Well, so far so good, but I'm not sure where that got us to. So, um, okay, gonna do a little bit of investigation. We'll continue on. Well, indeed, as the plot thickens, you know, I just don't really see anything down here that's gonna help us get the microwave, which means is that 
I think these are some little caps here in the four corners. And that's probably gonna get this trim kit out of the way. And so we are already on plan B, aren't we? So I'm gonna take my um, trusty um, sharp object, take a look at, see if I can get that out with a, and oh yeah, look at this, ha ha. There it is. Can you see that? Yep, yeah, there's some caps. And I better put those somewhere. Maybe be sure that this water is all empty. And put that in another one, but it looks like right behind here is where some more screws are. So I'm gonna have to get out these other three and continue on. It's getting more exciting as we go, isn't it? Oh man. Oh, hey, look at that. Exhibit number four. Okay, well, that gets me to the next step. So let's go ahead and see if I can get the trim step all taken off. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to getting the trim strips, don't you know? Hi ho, hi ho. Hi ho, hi ho. Well, that one's, oh, I see. It's got the. Um, wires there hooked up for the fan. So at this point, it might be good to turn off some power. So next step, we're gonna go ahead and de-energize and um, continue on. So far, so good. So I went um, in the house, did a little search on the internet, nothing there. Went to good old YouTube, um, saw some funny videos on uh, one couple there, what they did to get out their RV, but now we have a different situation here. That goes up like two inches. You're not gonna, I'm not, how am I gonna get a screwdriver in there? Yeah, how am I, how you I, broke the out of that with this. I didn't break anything. Ow! Okay, where's the first screw? First screw hole is right here. Oh, I know where the screw holes are. Let me just, let me just put this in diagonal and then straight. This will be great, great. So I think it's about time to fish or cut bait. Um, here's the scoop. So um, I was looking like, well, where is the access? And um, as you know, I went over on the side here and if you can see in there that um, brass screw, uh, there's two of them there and there is um, no way I can get my hands back there and get a screwdriver. So, you know, that is gonna be a problem. So I'm kind of getting the feeling that um, this whole assembly up here needs to come out. Not that this microwave is going to come out because it's strapped there and there's a screw in there. So I think what I'm going to have to do is remove the trim strip here. So if you notice over here, if I put my hand behind it, you can see how that trim slip wants to slide out. And I've got a feeling that this whole piece can just pop out. I can see this is loose here too. So I'm gonna have to remove this trim strip and then probably gonna have to take that one, maybe just slice it there so I don't have to take all 12 feet of that slider out. Um, and then maybe something will be revealed behind it. But there's no guarantees in this game. So mama said there'd be days like this and dad told me not to force things. Okay, we got a chisel here and going in. Oh, that comes out easy. Famous last words. Okay, well, let's see if we can go up a little bit higher. Yes, yes. Well, it looks like I'm not gonna destroy this one. Um, hmm, up at the top here, what's gonna happen? Hey, look at that. Yes, well, okay. That's a bit of good news anyway, so. That's one piece of the trim strip. Yeah, right at the end of that one there. So make a little score. Always put a little bit of putty over it or something. And uh, only the astute eye will notice. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and work on that a little bit. I'll be back. Well, okay, it's time for the big reveal. So we've got this um, huge trim strip piece here that goes on both sides and the top of the microwave. So we're going to get our hands behind it. And now that we got the trim strip, the small one out of the way, pull that forward and uh, 
hopefully not break any of these boards as we're twisting it forward gingerly as we go. Like Father said, don't break anything. So grab the other side and do some more wiggle wiggle and um, pull at the base. Yes, I think it is going to work. So that gets that piece out of the way. Well, so, okay, are we having fun yet? <laughs> well, you know how these projects goes. So, um, I was thinking like, um, yeah, okay, these screws, I need to get those out. So I'm gonna need to go buy an offset. So I got an offset screw driver and I thought, well, wait a second. If these screws are like, what, about three inches long? That's not gonna be able to go up. So, no, that's not gonna work, so. Yep, I can see where it's plan D is where we're at now. So these um, bolts are gonna have to come out and I've got them loosened up, which is great. And then I've got another three in the back there that I'm gonna have to get. And I went out into the garage and voila. <laughs> yeah, I, I never thought about a long breaker bar like this, but yeah, there's no reason I can't use that straight. Put it on the extender and um, let's take a look. Now, I don't know if I can have enough coordination to get both that in there and me at the same time but um come on baby you can get there uh, uh, uh. yeah it's gonna come out okay tenacity pays off i guess i don't know but the night is young and we are beautiful right so um, all right, stay tuned. <laughs> There'll be more on this on the continuing saga of replacing the microwave oven. Well, oh ye of such little faith. And that would be me. <laughs> I didn't think this was going to go. And I was just continuing to loose these up and it wasn't budging. And finally I wiggled a little bit and look at this. It just kind of came forward. I would have wanted to have Grace here to help me, but um, thank goodness I had the box underneath it there. So when it hinged forward, it just voila, it came loose. And so that was it. The four screws in the front and the other three bolts in the back, and that was what was holding it in that was behind this trim strip that we told you we had to remove. And um, so taking this trim strip out here for the um, microwave itself turned out not necessary, but um, you know, that's the way we learn. And so, um, yeah, on we go. You know, one thing I should do, I guess, is do the great reveal. Yes, we love our RVs. We take good care of them. We keep them nice and clean and try to do good maintenance on them. But some of these things are disappointing. When you take a look in here, um, look at all the metal shavings we've got here. Now, I got a lot of the big ones out. I didn't mention it before, but um, <laughs> some of them were about like an inch long, a half an inch long, and just metal shards that, you know, where the person who did the drilling in here, these things are sharp. And um, over here in this hole, it's just, oh man, I could cut my finger there if I pushed very hard at all, but um, just seeing all these little pieces of metal, um, if they go in the microwave, what do you think happens? And um, some of this is just um, not quite to the specs it should be. I've seen some screws that were sticking out near um, pieces of um, wire, the electrical wire, and if that sharp part of the screw penetrates one of these wires, well, that's not so good either. So, of course, in an RV, there's never any shaking where it would have vibrations to eventually wear through, would it? But it does make you wonder, and I guess I'm just saying, is that um, a lot of the parts in this RV are really well done, but once in a while, they get somebody comes in, probably gets paid by the hour, and, um, you know, it's just, they gotta go on to the next job. They don't have a chance to clean them up, and if somebody else was an apprentice supposed to do it behind them, well, so much for that. Anyway, just thought you should know, so um, I'm not suggesting you take the trim strips off of your RV, but um, sometimes when things go a little bit awry, it's um, good to have a little bit of mechanical inclination, as much fun as this project's be, just so you kind of know how to work on things and what some of the things you might want to look out for. Well, incidentally, I found another interesting data point, a factoid here. Look at this and tell me what you think. Okay, that's the bracket that the microwave oven goes on. And um, do you see anything peculiar? Let's look, pull back a little bit. All right, okay, so we've got the oven down here under the cardboard box stand. And uh, so the heat goes up. It goes up behind the hood that goes here. And um, where's the vent? 
<laughs> there is no vent that was put in here. So in other words, what's been happening is all the heat that has come up and goes through the fan and goes up, it's been going out this way. So um, that grill that we saw um, before on the trim that was in the front, yeah, that's where all the um, hot air goes up in the gases from the um, propane tank. Oh, now, isn't that nice? So once in a while, you know, we, we get like the siren will go off. Beep, 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 beep. Well, hello, no wonder, unless you got this really open and running full blast. Um, yeah, um, you get to smell those nice fumes, don't you? Oh, isn't that great? And that means, um, yeah, that's not so good, really. So I think they should have, I don't know. I'm gonna have to check with some other people who have the um, same model and see if something happened there. I don't know why there isn't a vent there, but um, as it is now, yeah, it's a good thing we run the fan. So um, lesson learned is that when you're cooking, you probably always want to keep the stove on. It'll keep it nice and toasty, that's for sure, because the heat's all going to stay inside with the gases. But um, I think Fleetwood um, could have done a little bit better on that one. What do you think? Sleepy sea towns tasted salty ocean air. 